Welcome to Harvesting Clouds, where we take a practical approach to learning and leveraging clouds. In this video, we will see how to create Azure Private Endpoint for Azure Storage Account. Before watching this video, I highly recommend that you take a look at the previous video where we explored the concepts of Azure Private Endpoint in detail. You can do so by clicking on the top right corner or in the description below. Before jumping into the Azure portal, let's take a quick look at the scenario that we are going to accomplish today. So in here, we have a virtual network within Azure and a storage account within Azure. Within the virtual network, we also have a virtual machine. So if we need to connect to the Azure storage account, this virtual machine needs to be able to connect to the storage account through the internet. Same goes for us. If we are here at the office or at our home, if we want to connect to the storage account, we need to connect to it through the internet. Now, once we will deploy Azure Private Endpoint, what happens is the storage account that is extended into the virtual network. And essentially it gets a private IP address from the virtual network, from one of the subnet within the virtual network. Now this virtual machine, since this also belongs to this virtual network, it will be able to connect to the storage account over the private network without going to the internet. Whereas we, when sitting at our home or in the office, without connectivity to this virtual network, we'll still need to go through the internet. If we had any express route or site-to-site -site VPN, then we will also be able to connect to this storage account using its private IP address. So let's jump into the Azure portal and start creating the private endpoint. So here I'm already logged into the Azure portal. To begin, I will navigate to the Azure storage account, which is this one, ST Harvesting Finance 101. To keep things simple, we will be using the Azure storage account name and the access keys. As a best practice, I should be using shared access signature, but to keep things simple, I will be leveraging access keys. From where will I be connecting to this storage account? I have a virtual machine named as VM Accounts 101 from the virtual network Infra 101 VNet and default subnet within that. This VM is already connected, as you can see, to this particular virtual network and default subnet within that virtual network. And this is where I'll also be connecting my storage account through private endpoint. So right now, if I have to connect, what I'll need to do is I'll need to go into this VM. So I'm already inside this VM, as you can see from the name in the top left corner. And to connect, I'll need to right click, click on connect to Azure storage. And then I'll use storage account name and key hit next, display name could be anything. I'll provide the name of the storage account and the access keys. By the way, we did explore Azure Storage Explorer in detail in one of the previous videos. So if you haven't checked that before, you can do so by clicking on the link in the description below. So I'll hit next, it will show me all the details, it will show me the endpoint suffix. I'll click on connect to connect to this particular storage account. In here, I can see the different blob containers inside it, and I can see the files inside it as well. I can open up a command prompt from this VM, and I can try to ping this particular storage account. I'll append it with blob.core.windows.net. I'll not be able to ping that since ICMP is not the protocol enabled on Azure Storage Explorer. But the thing that I want you to notice is this IP address that is a public IP address. This is the IP address which was resolved for my storage account. So right now it is public IP address. This is the scenario, this is the situation before we have implemented the private endpoint. Now let's go back to the Azure portal and start implementing the private endpoint. To do that, we have a couple of ways. 
there is something called private link and I can navigate to that and from there I can create a private endpoint with my storage account or in here on the left hand side under settings I have this option for private endpoint connections. So from here to create a new connection all I need to do is click on this plus private endpoint and it will initiate the wizard where I can create the private endpoint. I'll select a subscription and a resource group. I'll provide instance details. I'll provide a region. The private endpoint can be in a different region, but it has to be in the same region as the network. And then I'll select the resource. I'll say that connect to a, an Azure resource in my directory or I can connect to an Azure resource by resource ID or alias. Since I'm already connected to my subscription, I'll select the resource from the list. And the resource I'm looking for is microsoft.storage slash storage accounts. So in here, it will list all the storage accounts in my subscription. I'll find the storage account for which I want to create the private endpoint and will select that. And then under that, the sub resource is going to be blob. I'll click on next to configure more configurations. And the configurations I am going to configure are networking and DNS related. In the top, I will select which virtual network and within that virtual network, which subnet I'm going to connect this particular storage account to through the private endpoint. And down below, do I want a private DNS integration? That means do I want to create a DNS name for this particular storage account? And this DNS name will map to its private IP address. So it will get a private IP address from this subnet. So it will be something like 10.0.3. something. And that IP address will have a DNS name, which will look something like private link.blob.core.windows.net. So in here, optionally, you can provide some tags. And then finally, review and create. As a best practice in a production scenario, you should always provide tags to categorize your resources. And later on, that will also help you to filter out your resources through any automation or when you are pulling up your billing reports. So for now, I'll hit create. It will initialize the deployment. I'll pause the video here. Once I come back, the deployment will be complete. After a few minutes, the deployment is now complete and successful, as you can see from the screen. Now we can navigate to the private endpoint by clicking on this go to resource button. Or what we can do is we can go back to the storage account. And then in here, I can under settings, navigate to private endpoint connections. As you can see, now there is a new connection that has been created for us. To navigate to this particular connection, I can click on this particular link under private endpoint. And this is the private endpoint that has been created for us. Essentially what it includes is a new network interface. And this is that particular NIC card or network interface. And this is connected to the default subnet under infra 101 VNet that we selected during the creation wizard. And the private link resource, it also shows here that this is the storage account. Down below, it shows that this is the private IP address that has been assigned to this particular network interface card. Another interesting thing is that the FQDN, the fully qualified domain name for this particular storage account will be this. This matches the one that is available publicly but automatically now this will be converted to this particular pipe, private IP address. So when you will try to connect to the storage account from end user perspective, the experience will not be different from what we did before. The experience will be exactly same. You will be leveraging the storage account name and its access key to connect to the storage account name. But when we will check for that particular storage account name, what IP address it resolves to, it will automatically resolve to this particular private IP address. Let's jump into the VM again and look at the experience in action. 
So I'm back in the VM here again. This VM is in the same network. So I'll perform the ping action to that particular URL again. But notice, right now, this particular domain name, that is your storage account name dot blob dot core dot windows dot net. This is being resolved to a private IP address. This is no longer a public IP address as it was before. Also, you can observe here that this is being resolved to private link related URL now. So the unique name for this internally is being resolved to private link.blob.core.windows.net. From connectivity perspective, let me detach this and create the connection again. I'll mention to use storage account name and the key. Hit next. I'll provide a display name here. Let's call it test connection 102. I'll switch back to the Azure portal. I'll copy the storage account name from here. And then the access key. I'll hit next and then connect. And I'm again able to connect to this particular storage account. But as we discussed earlier, behind the scene, now it is connecting through the private IP address instead of using the public IP address. So now my connection is much more secure. Now my connection is much more private than before. It is never leaving the Microsoft backbone. In additionally, it is never leaving my virtual network. The communication between the storage account and my virtual machine, it's always on the same virtual network. That reduces the latency and also gives me performance gains. As well as the security aspect, the connection is always, the whole communication is always within that particular virtual network. So here in this particular video, we saw how to create a private endpoint and then how to connect to that particular private endpoint and what happens behind the scene with the IP address switching from public to the private through the virtual network interface being attached to that particular storage account. Similar service is also available for various other Azure resources like Azure SQL databases, Azure web apps, etc. The experience is exactly the same from the interface perspective, from the wizard perspective, but we will take a look at different other resources in upcoming videos. If you like the content, hit that like button, hit the subscribe and the bell icon to get notified of the latest content. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.